everyone, welcome to Wine Bob. Thanks for joining us. We're going to be going over decanting service today as well as how to open a wine bottle with NOS cells. We're going to be using our lighter, the candle, we have our decanter, a wine glass, our wine bottle in a cradle, the OSO wine opener, our standard server's friend corkscrew, and of course, our serviette. Part of the reason why we have a couple of these different tools, we have the cradle so that when you remove the bottle from your cellaring area, uh, it doesn't disturb the sediment, which is particularly important when you're decanting sediment off of a wine, because you don't want that sediment to mix in with the wine that way when you're pouring it gets all gritty and, and sandy and whatnot. We have the candle so that as you're decanting the bottle into the wine, you can see through the neck of the bottle and see when that sediment starts to creep up into the wine. That way you can pull everything back. So you'll see there's this little wire cage over the wine. This is actually used in Rioja so that when they're storing the wine bottles, they can actually hang it from the wire cage upside down. That way all the sediment can collect and settle. Um, we don't have to do that particularly here, but just something to note when you're taking it off, you can use your service friend or just kind of cut around it. And you're gonna go ahead and remove that by whatever means you've got. Now we've got the server's friend available just so that we can cut the, the foil. We're not gonna use it much after that. Any trash that you develop along this process, again, just ends up in your pocket. So like we did with our regular still bottle, we're just gonna make our, our first cut under the second lip, not the first, cause that's gonna catch wine along the way, but we're gonna go ahead and cut it under that second lip. And again, you're gonna try your, your hardest not to disturb the bottle too much. You don't want any of that sediment to shake up on the inside. Once you peel the foil off the top, you're gonna to go ahead and just discard that with the rest of your trash in your pocket. Now, after you remove the foil, it's always a good practice to take your serviette and just kind of wipe the top of it. Especially over time, you'll get buildup of dirt. You may get some mold buildup as well, but it just makes sure that there's no cross-contamination. Now we're gonna to move to the osso. So the osso is just two prongs. There's a longer one and a shorter one. We're gonna lead with the longer end and just put that into the cork. And then we're gonna follow with the shorter end into the opposite side. So once you get both sides in, you're gonna just wiggle it in the rest of the way. Oh yeah, that's the business. You're gonna be gentle because sometimes what can happen, especially with older bottles, is as you push it in, it'll start to push the cork in as well. And if you're not gentle enough, it'll shove it all the way in and you'll never get it out. So then we're gonna twist it out slowly. We're just gonna make a nice firm grip all the way around. Once you get about a third of the way, third to half, you're gonna grip with your index finger and your thumb right on the two prongs, and then you're gonna twist it from those being very gentle along the way. We're lucky that with this bottle, it's only seven years old, so you don't have to worry too much about it. But as the bottles get older, the corks become more fragile. And then you just remove it. And as you can see, it's all intact. Well, once the cork is out, you can go ahead and sheath your osso. And again, you're gonna try not to disturb the sediment on this bottle. Pull it up, keep it as still as possible. And you're gonna position the candle under the neck of the bottle so you can see the bottle itself illuminated in some of the light. Pick up the decanter and slowly you're gonna pour, pour it in and look through the neck of the bottle to see if and when the sediment starts to creep up. This is, again, this is a very slow process, but it's mainly so that none of the sediment gets into the wine. That way you have a nice, clean glass of wine and your textures remain relatively pure. Well, as I'm looking through this, it, I mean, the glass is dark and the wine is dark, but honestly, you can see pretty clearly through it. But you have to maintain the line of sight with the candle to make sure the entire thing stays illuminated. Now, as you start to get to the bottom third of the bottle, you'll start to see some sediment creeping up towards the neck. And as it gets to the neck, 
you're just going to pull it back. Good so far. So now what little sediment was in the bottle is still in the bottle and the rest of the wine is still in, in the decanter. So once we pour the wine, all that's going to be in there is wine. You're not going to have any of this grittiness to it. If you do, it's okay. There's nothing bad about sediment, but a lot of it's just tartaric acid. It's just going to add this grittiness or the sandiness. Um, it's completely textural. There's nothing harmful about it whatsoever. So don't worry if you do get in there. This takes practice over time, but that's going to be the appropriate way to open the decanter either table side or at your gear daughter or at home. Just some nice little pointers to, to throw in there. Once you've got your decanted wine, just like we've done in the past, you're going to pour some for the host of the bottle. Nothing more than an ounce. And again, just a small amount like that. Now, just a note for, for those of you who are enjoying wine at home or, or at a restaurant, when you're checking a wine, what you're checking for is you're checking for uh, flaws in the wine. And that could be um, this nail polishy characteristic, which in low concentrations can be really nice, but when it's overpowering and all you can smell is nail polish remover, it's, a, it's what's considered a wine flaw. You're also looking for, um, most commonly, TCA, trichloranosol, which is cork taint. And what that smells like is moldy newspapers or moldy cardboard. Um, and it completely overwhelms the wine to the point where you know, all you can smell is mold and all you can taste is mold. So that's ultimately what you're looking for. The wine is clear. So from there, you're able to serve the table. Now remember, you're gonna do this in a couple of rotations, starting with the guest of honor at the table. You'll then continue on to the women of the table, followed by the men and ending with the host of the bottle. I hope this helped. And if you have any other questions, go ahead and post those in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer those at any point in time. Otherwise, subscribe and share. I really do appreciate your support. And I look forward to sharing this with you in the future. Cheers.